On today's episode, we are going to take a look at Activision versus EA Games and see which is a better investment. So let's get started. And like I said, today's episode, we are going to take a look at Activision versus EA Games. And right here is the point system that I'm going to take a look at. We're going to take a look at market cap growth, revenue breakdown, revenue growth, margin growth, balance sheet, cash flow, forward PE ratio, forward price to sales ratio, and the overall business. Finally, at the end, there's hopefully a winner. In my last episode where I did Amazon versus Alibaba, I think I ended up with a tie. Um, so there's sometimes when I get a tie. And the whole purpose of this is not really to see um, just because one is a winner does not mean the other one is a bad investment. It just seems to me which one I would probably invest in more. I'm very bullish in the esports segment. So seeing doing both these companies is actually pretty exciting for me. So I hope you guys enjoyed today's episode. Like always, guys, don't forget to hit the subscribe button, the thumbs up and the bell. It helps the small channel out so much. And I truly, truly appreciate the support. Finally, if you guys want to get in contact with me, I'm very active in the comments, but I'm also active on Twitter you can follow me there and I do have a free discord group where you guys can come in and there's definitely a, a there's a bunch of investors there all with different experience so feel free to join the channel all right guys and this is something I'm trying to do every Monday I'm calling it Monday match last week I did J Amazon versus Alibaba the week before that I did Alibaba versus JD today we're doing Activision versus EA games and for the upcoming week let me know in the comments which one you guys want me to do next maybe Google versus Amazon maybe Zoom versus CrowdStrike Microsoft versus Apple I think was getting a lot of comments in the previous video unfortunately Activision versus EA one but like I said make sure to let me know in the comments below all right so now let's go here in the point system like i said the first thing we're going to take a look at is market cap growth and the best way to see the market cap growth is just to take a look at the company's performance in the past five years i am a long-term investment so for me five years is what i like to see right i think one year there's too much noise going around to really see what kind of results the company has given to investors but in the past five years if you invested in activision five years ago you would have got about 180 percent returns now let's take a look at ea games ea games in the same time has given you 90 percent growth i'm pretty sure both of these right now are beating the overall market if we take a growth actually let's just take a look at the overall spy um spy stock in the past five years has returned 53%. So yes, both EA Sports and Activision have beaten the market by huge margins. And this is not even counting dividends, which both of these companies actually pay. Actually, no, that's a lie. EA Games does not pay a dividend. And so right now we can see the overall winner of best market growth is going to be Activision. And this to me, um, one thing I do want to mention is sometimes people might be like hey since ea games grew us a lot slower than activision then obviously the best way, the best decision will be for me to buy ea games right because eventually it'll have the returns activision does and that's not necessarily true and from my experience i see complete i see i usually see the complete opposite the ones that are growing strong in historic historically are going to be the ones that are going to continue to grow strong as years uh, as the years progress right and i feel like that's something that's really lost in this investment world for example when for when when stocks go up or down people tend to buy stocks that tend that have gone down in stock price it's company people don't normally normally normal psychology won't make you buy a company that's an all-time highs but sometimes those all-time highs keep going higher and higher and higher now let's take a quick look at market cap for the company activision has a market cap of about 54.5 billion where ea games has a market cap of 34.5 so ea games is a lot smaller than activision and like i said right the first point we're giving the market cap growth to activision next let's take a look at revenue breakdown so in revenue breakdown i pretty much just want to see how this company collects its revenue and, and through what markets it 
it's broken down so first let's take a look at activision and activision in its most recent quarter which happened in i think it was may may 5th yes so not even a month ago in their most recent earnings they broke down their re um, net revenues by the following so if you guys don't know activision has pretty much three companies that it owns it owns activision and activision is best known for call of duty that's their biggest seller they've also done really good with call of duty mobile a lot of the new a lot of the new gaming companies have gone more to a free mobile type games where you don't purchase the game but they have those those on stores on in-game purchases that you can do with real money and that's what's really driving up especially in countries where right in country in low income countries kids with phones now are able to just buy um download a free game and then they'll be able to spend a few dollars to to buy certain parts for the games and i do think that's certain reasons why like fortnite is doing so well why games like apex is doing well and games like call of duty mobile or even call of duty warzone which just came out which is also a free it, it was a free freemium game where you don't pay you don't pay for the game but you pay for anything you want to buy inside the game and if you don't buy the stuff, it's okay, right? It doesn't really affect it. So this company, like I said, has three major segments and they're pretty much split up pretty evenly. Activision, they pretty much make up about one third of each revenue. First, like I said, was Activision. The second is Blizzard Entertainment. And if you guys don't know Blizzard, you might heard of World of Warcraft, Hearthstone, Overwatch, Starcraft. So there is a big platform there. And then many people don't actually know this. Activision owns King. And King has one of the best, best mobile games out there, Candy Crush. And this is where they collect actually a lot of money from revenue. Out of all of them, the ones with the best profit operating margins is Blizzard, collecting 44% margins. And the others collect a little bit over 30%. And right now, let me just zoom in for you guys. If you guys want to just pause it real quick, if you guys want to look at the numbers. All right. So next, we want to take a look at EA Electronics. And EA Electronics, unfortunately, did not break down their segment as, as I would have hoped um, compared to Activision. They actually break it down by game downloads, live services, and mobile. And live services, you guys might ask, what's that? And that's exactly what I explained previously before, where it's something where you pay inside the game for the product, right? You're, um, you're not paying for the actual game itself. You're paying for some product inside the game via some form of subscription, some form of pass, some form of item so this company's in this most recent quarters 190 out of the 100 so about 10 percent of this company's quarterly net, um, net bookings comes from full game downloads a huge portion over 50 over 50 i would say even over 70 percent comes from live services which is that subscription and the other 10 percent comes from mobile so two things to note here is first the big thing is this company collects a lot of its revenue from live services unfortunately we don't see how activision has to broke it down by games but ea games is a little bit more diversified in its game it has games like we're gonna see they have they have madden they have fifa they have nhl they have Com command and conquer they have bejeweled need for speed so they the simpsons they own a lot of star wars a lot of star wars sims uh, uh the, all different types of of sports game apex so activision i i feel ea games has a bigger broad of games allowed to them where activision focuses mainly on its strong platforms and i think that's something investors might want to see which one they like better um so i do think here they both have strong breakdowns because they have different different types of platforms and each platform collects a different amount of revenue so for that reason i'm actually going to give a point to both activision and ea games on revenue breakdown and this is um this is i might do this sometimes sometimes when i like them both equally i'll just give points to both of them next let's take a look at revenue growth and revenue growth i'm here on this amazing website known as lazyfa.com and i want to see this company's press revenue growth in 2019 activision dropped its revenue by about 13.4 percent compared to the year before that in 2018 it went up six percent in 2017 it went up six percent and in 2016 it went up 41 percent on on average you can see it's probably in the low low level digits low single digits high 
high single digits revenue growth so it's not like this company's revenue is growing at a crazy rate one thing though last year this company's revenue did drop down by 13 percent and one of the main reasons the only reason i know this is because i do follow the ea the the gaming businesses very well last year ea games ended up selling a portion of their company um they ended up selling the the part of ownership they had for a game called destiny so when they sold that portion now it obviously affected future revenue since they no longer were making money from that game so that's why we see that 13.4 percent now if we take a look at their most recent quarters net bookings for this may 5th of 2020 this company's net bookings were up 20 percent compared to same time last year so that's actually pretty strong but remember one main reason is covid 19 was happening during this time so a lot more people were at home a lot more people were buying games i know for me i ended up actually purchasing a few games from activision during this time next let's take a look at ea games and their growth margins in 20 in 28 2020 this company grew about 11 about 12 percent compared to the year before the year in 2019 it grew it actually declined by four percent the year before that it actually saw a revenue growth of about six percent and the year before that it saw revenue growth of 10 percent so you might be like jose ea games has better revenue growth right in the most recent year it actually saw 11 percent growth but remember the year before that actually saw a big decline so when things go down if it was something off in the market and then things pick back up that revenue growth is going to be a lot larger so in activision where we're seeing a revenue growth down this year when this year ends i'm pretty i'm pretty Pretty sure we're gonna see a very strong revenue growth for 2020 but nonetheless right now let's take a look at the most recent earnings in the most recent earnings net bookings were up were actually down 11 percent compared to same time last year one of the main reasons is they are changing the way they're doing net bookings and i'm wondering if this has affected um but right now i do think the gaming the growth is a little bit better on activision just because actually i'm not sure here in revenue growth to be honest i don't feel comfortable giving a, a point to any of them and my main reason is right net bookings for activision this quarter is 20 percent but remember the previous year was a very bad year for for activision so obviously those numbers are going to be a little bit better even if they didn't grow as much compared to two years before just because last year was a huge decline and in at ea games they actually saw a 11 percent decrease compared to the same time last year but remember last year was a very strong quarter for them and they're actually changing the way they're doing that bookings so for me right now they both have decent growth right they're not slow growers but they're not a growth stock um so i'm actually gonna have to give no points to to these companies right here next let's take a look at margins um for the company and first let's take a look at activision activision's gross profits for 2019 were 67.7 profit margins for 2019 were 23.2 percent one thing i'm seeing is gross margins is increasing every year and that's something you want to see and as a software company 67 percent is actually pretty strong profit margins do seem to be an uptrend um sitting at 23 percent especially let's take a look back in previous years yes we do see an uptrend in both gross margins and profit margins now let's take a look at ea games margins ea games margins for for 2020 um for the most recent year was 75.3 percent so does the gross margin yes so ea games actually has better gross margins than activision they actually also have better profit margins than activision's and my main reason for that i, I would say is because this company's most of its revenue came from live services which is that subscription based type revenue um so profit margins are growing pretty strong and they're actually pretty high so for me even though both these companies are really strong in gross margins and profit margins i think the winner here is going to be ea games on there all right next let's take a look at these companies balance sheets and let's start off with activision first let's just lump jump into their liabilities in the most recent quarters that ended that was this past may 
This company reported non-current debt of about $2.7 billion. This company reported actually zero current debt. So this company's total debt was $2.7 billion. This company has about $5.9 billion of cash and cash equivalents. So this company has plenty and plenty of cash to pay off its non-current debt and still have cash left over. So this is a very, very strong balance sheet. If I was to give it a grade, it would be somewhere of a B plus. All right, so now let's take a look at EA Games' most recent balance sheet. They have about $600 million in current debt and about $400 million in non-current debt. So that's about a million $1 billion in debt. But this company has about $5.7 billion of quick cash. This company has actually similar amount of cash levels. And the way I got that is by adding the 3.8 in cash equivalents by about $2 billion in current investments. So that gives me that about 5.8 billion. And that's very similar to, to Activision, right? We see Activision having 5.9 but it does seem like this company has a lot less debt than activision it only has about one billion dollars in debt when activision has 2.6 one thing to note is that most of that activision only has non-current debt so this debt can actually be due in like 2026 2027 2028 so we don't really know how that is done but both of these have strong strong balance sheets and they have plenty of cash after paying off their total debt, which is something I really, really like. Another thing I like about both of them is the deferred revenue. Deferred revenue is a huge portion of these companies' liabilities. And this is a fake liability to me. If you guys have been watching my channel, you understand why. This is eventually revenue this company will collect after providing the service to them. So for me, both of these actually have a strong balance sheet. And here I'm actually going to do something very similar where i'm gonna give one point to both companies actually right now this is a tie hopefully it does not end up as a tie um, but we'll keep, keep but we'll keep going on from here the next thing i want to take a look at is cash flow so let's take a look at operating when i take a look at cash flow i want to take a look at the operating cash flow margins operating cash flow margins in this most recent year for activision were 28.2 percent and it seems to in the past years that's where it seems to jump on it's between the mid 20s to the low 30s so right now let's say an average of 28.2 so 28.2 percent of this company's total revenue actually makes it as a cash flow statements in the march as operating cash flow and that's actually pretty strong next let's take a look at ea games EA Games' most recent operating cash flow was 32%. 32%, and this actually seems to be always above 30%. So this is actually a lot better than Activision's. And for that reason, I'm going to have to give the point on cash flow to EA Games. So it does seem like EA Games did take the lead right now. Now let's go take a look at valuation. And unfortunately, I think I know who's going to win here. Um... So first, forward P.E. ratio. So we're going to take a look at price to earnings ratio two years from now. Forward P.E. ratio for Activision is 23.34. Now let's take a look at forward P.E. ratio for EA Games. Forward P.E. ratio for EA Games for two years from now is 20.7. So 20.7 is definitely a lot better than what Activision is doing. It's telling me that, hey, EA Games is undervalued a bit compared to activision and later on i'm gonna give my thoughts if i think this is, is true but if we just take a look at numbers right now this is gonna be another point to ea games so i, I do think ea games is gonna win but next let's take a look at forward price to sales ratio forwards price to sales ratio for activision is 7.1 7.1 for Activision and forward price to sales ratio for EA Games is 5.7. Obviously, the lower the better. So again, this is going to be another one where EA Game wins. Um, so right now, it does seem there's no way, no matter even if my overall business, which is just my thoughts, is going to give the points to any of them. It does seem like EA Game is going to win, but I'm still going to give my overall opinion. So overall business. I do think Activision is a little more expensive than EA Games, 
but I do think there is a reason for it. And I do think there's more potential in Activision than in EA games. As a, as a gamer myself, even though I'm not a strong gamer, I, I feel like I've, I'm able to follow the customer base pretty well. Activision is focusing on strengthening, strengthening their, their main games. They strengthen Call of Duty. They strengthen Candy Crush, World of Warcraft, and Hearthstone. And that's pretty much where they're spending all their resources at Diablo and, and just improving from there going into mobile games. This is something that's very strong where ea games has a lot more different games that they can't really focus on one thing and that's in my opinion opinion a weakness for me if i was a business i would want to focus on what i'm super strong at and make sure i become even stronger and stronger in that the other thing i want to talk about is Activision actually is a little more into esports than EA games and I am very bullish on esports. If we take a look at this chart here and let me see if I can open up this image better. Here it tells me in in the, all the streaming platforms which games were watched the most by the type of publishers. Number 3 was Blizzard Entertainment. Number five was Electronic Arts. So me, more people spend more time watching Blizzard Entertainment games than Electronic Arts games. And that to me is something that tells me I now I see why Blizzard Entertainment is more expensive, expensive than EA games. They also have a lot more esports tournaments. They have a deal with YouTube right now where YouTube is pay, has paid them to play EA sport, um, Blizzard Entertainment Sports. EA Games does have a bit of esports with all its sports type games, but it's nowhere the level of Blizzard Entertainment. And for that reason, I am going to have to give the overall business point to Activision. And it does seem Activision comes up with four points. EA Games is going to come up with six points. And that's pretty crazy, right? I did think, I'm not going to lie, I thought Activision was going to bring the game. And like I said, both of the just because ea won does not mean that activision is a bad investment personally for me i like activision better but these numbers seem to be different so i honestly am going to um i, I don't believe i have an open position on ea games i am going to try to open up a position on ea games and i still looking at that forward pe ratio forward to price sales ratio they are a little bit expensive for my taste but i don't mind adding up to them right now because these are two sector two companies that i'm very very bullish on so that's it for today's episode guys i hope you guys enjoy it don't forget to hit the subscribe button the thumbs up and the bell it helps the small channel out so much and i truly truly appreciate the support take care guys have a good night and see you next time